Hello, I'm Snap Strategy, and I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you a series of tutorials for Crusader Kings 3's expansion, Tours and Tournaments. Today, we're learning all about Grand Tournaments and Falconry Hunt. The first Grand Tournaments are massive contests, which are open invites. So, if any are hosted near you, you will get a notification, giving you the option to attend. But to host one, it can be found inside the new activity tab. Then you must select a county to host it. The deeper the green, the better the host city. Mostly down to buildings, as some give discounts to host in grand tournaments. But once selected, you have eight different contests to choose from. Melee, archery, jousting, duel, wrestling, board game, recital, and horse racing. You can only select up to a maximum of five contests, although you may be limited to less, depending on your current era and cultural traditions. Contest after is shown for each event, giving you an idea how well you might do while competing. But with your contests selected, you can now choose if you want to take part in each one. But taking part is how you gain the Hasteluda trait, a new special type of trait with multiple paths, each leveled up by taking part in different events. For example, recitals level wit and wrestling levels foot, with each path and level granting your ruler a range of bonuses. But now we enter the second phase of planning. Your intent is what you personally want to achieve. From triumph, if you seek glory and to win events, or recruit, if you are there looking to fill your court with new knights. Certain contests are locked to the martial gender of your culture, so selecting a champion allows them to compete on your behalf. Stacking up rewards, which as their liege, you can take a major cut of. Although, it is still worth having a champion, even if you can compete, as they still have a chance to get some extra rewards for you. The next section, activity options, allows you to customize how grand or not so grand the prizes and accommodation will be. From ramshackle tents to luxurious encampments, simple prizes all the way to magnificent ones. Each option making other people more likely to join in your tournament, and if you plan to win, better prizes for you at the ceremony. But now it is time to begin your tournament. Before each contest, you can see the qualification threshold you must reach to compete, which is the sum of your likelihood to win based off traits, health, and skill. Although to boost this, you can visit some of the local areas. Each of them provides the chance to gain certain bonuses, but the tawny ground has the opportunity to increase your progress to victory, which is what's used to qualify. And the tent camp may even allow you to sabotage other contestants. Then if qualified, you may now compete. If not, you can still spectate and before each event, you can even place a bet on who you think will win. For each contest, it is a series of events, putting your skills up against your opponents until a winner is declared. Then, between each contest, you'll have some time to visit more of the local areas. But after the last event finishes, the ceremony begins, giving each contest winner an artifact based off the prize level selected earlier, then on to the conclusion, a breakdown of each event winner and what they earned. Next thing is falconry hunts, a special type of hunt where instead of using bows and spears, you send your hawk to hunt. Similar to tournaments, you need to select a suitable location. Success can be negatively affected by high development, but improved from certain terrain types and if you have a sight in there, which is gained by somebody with the hunter trait or your master of the hunt reporting one to you. With the location selected, it is time to travel. On the left, you can employ a caravan master, which helps improve your speed and safety, as well as two travel option slots, with many options to help make the journey safer. Once again, you can select your intent and activity options. This time, attendance aid in the hunt and increase your success chance, and also the bigger the party size, the more prestige you get at the end. Before setting off, open the guest tab and quickly invite in entire categories of people to accompany you. Then it is time to travel to the hunt. Success chance can be seen at the bottom and hovering over it gives you a breakdown of your current score, but don't worry, this can be improved 
through certain events during the hunt. After everybody arrives, you get to choose your target and each one given a different prestige gain. And then going through the events, you edge closer to your prey and any interactions can be seen in the activity log, showing things you have done and the other hunters. Then finally, it is time to release your hawk and attempt to bring down your target, bringing us to the conclusion, showing any rewards such as artifacts and how much falconer trait experience gained. Similar to the Hastaluda trait, Hunter now has two paths, Venator for typical hunts and Falconer for falconry hunts. And that was Grand Tournaments and falconry hunts. And in the next video, we will learn all about weddings and murder feasts. So make sure you're subscribed not to miss that.